So here we're going to be looking at the diff 2 amplifier circuit shown here and we're going to be looking at the gain and parameters of the circuit. So we start with the current equations here and move into Laplace space to get the gain here and from this general equation of the second order bandpass filter we can get the parameters tau and q which describe the circuit. Here we look at the special case where the frequency of the input signal is tau. So we plug that into the transfer function and we get a gain of Q and the phase of minus pi over 2 from the 1 over J that comes out of the transfer function. We also want to look at cascaded filters versus filter banks. Because we're looking at neuromorphic circuits and filters, we want to look at the architecture of how these filters are arranged so that we can get a better understanding of why one architecture might be preferred over the other. First we'll look at cascaded filters and their advantages. The first one is their dynamic range. A slight change in the Q value of each of these filters results in a much more compact range at the output. The second advantage for a cascaded filter is its temporal resolution, meaning that as the intensity of a signal increases so does its temporal resolution. It's, better, it's more easily trackable in time. That goes for both the cascaded and the filter bank. However, for a cascaded filter, it scales logarithmically, whereas in a filter bank, it's linear. So with smaller signals, the cascaded filter generally does better. The third advantage that the cascaded filter has is the distortion or spectral selection. Because it has so many cascaded filters, it can have better corner frequencies and more finely tune the input signal. Whereas a filter bank requires much higher orders and much more filters to achieve the same result. The disadvantages to a cascaded filter are that the cascade may be prone to accumulating noise. The other thing is that the gain is sensitive to the Q values on each of the filters, which may also cause the filter cascade to be unstable. However, there are solutions to these problems, which really make the cascaded filter much better than the filter bank. The solutions are that you can make the Q values of the filters dependent on the gain so that there is some negative feedback and there is some sort of regulation. Uh, the solution to the noise is that at the end of the cascade, you start to taper the tau values of the filter, or you can just limit the number of filters in the cascade so that you can really decrease the noise or at least severely limit the noise. Going back to the LPF block that we were talking about, um, we tried making this circuit, as you can see in this block diagram, and then we put this on the board. And we noticed that we're not getting any reliable captures on a ramp ADC. It's just weird. It, this is not what we expect. So we tried to change our strategy and go with IO ports instead. The easiest thing that we tried was to just have a very simple block which would generate a one volt voltage coming out of this arbitrary signal generator. And then we would buffer it as other teammates recommended. I think that was Colin's team. And we put that out on IOPAD 1 just to see if we could actually get one volt on that IOPAD. And here we have uh, an oscilloscope hooked up to IOPAD 1. And if we go and look at the scope, it's all that we see is essentially noise. Like we're looking at millivolts coming out. So I don't think our IOPAD is actually working. We feel that we are not configuring this correctly. So we're not able to even get any signal through to the chip or out of it. So to characterize our LPF block, we started with this schematic and we put this circuit onto our FEAA board here and then we basically tried to input a signal through a signal generator. As you can see, this is outputting a sine wave and we tried to put this in, get it processed on the FPA through the LPF block and I've been trying to view the output coming again through these audio ports on an oscilloscope and basically I have 
the input signal coming in over here and the output coming in over here. And you notice that I can't really see anything on the output, which is weird because I'm pretty sure there is an output over there. For example, for instance, if I just flip this little soldering job that I did, I swap that out for a couple of headphones. I hear a very, very faint sound. I'm not sure if this is going to come through, but I'm going to put my headphones onto the mic of this phone. And maybe it got recorded. But essentially, I'm saying that I can hear a very faint sine wave coming out. And if I try sweeping the frequency, the sound changes.